Hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible, Verse by Verse, a plain and simple study of the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by book, verse, verse by verse. Um, we are currently in Exodus chapter 20, and um, now we're kind of getting into God establishing the laws. And what is interesting is that he is establishing the laws as in front of the people. So he's going to give the Ten Commandments in front of the people. Now, um, in chapter 19, God tells them that he is going to come down. They will witness him. They will see the presence of God. And it is an earth-shattering experience. A mountain shakes, thick smoke and fire. And we're going to see later on how the people responded. At first, they're intrigued. And God tells, God gives them very specific instructions that they are not to go past a certain boundary that was set, clearly set. They were to consecrate themselves. Um, and so uh, God comes, descends on the mountain, and this, you see this smoke, this fire, and the earth, I mean the mountain, shook violently. And then Moses goes up to... Um, into the, the thick clouds he goes up to and God is communicating with Moses and we said this is sort of like what this is a the, the 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 epitome of what the mediator ministry is about God speaks to Moses Moses then relays the message to the people the people respond and then God and then Moses goes back Moses is the mediator he goes back and then he relays the people's message. As if God, of course, God already knows by what the people are saying. But that's the idea there is the mediator. Now, all of the law is a symbol of the essence of what Jesus would be. And, and, and that's important to understand, too, why all of this is happening. In the meantime, the people are um, curious and curiosity gets to some of them even some of the priests where they try to break through the um, barrier to see take a closer look and God tells them better tell them to stay back <laughs> better tell them to stay back so Moses comes down and this is where we are so as we pick up in this chapter this is the same scene right here as we pick up in this chapter it's unclear the words God's going to begin to give what we know as the Ten Commandments. Um, it's unclear if the people is actually hearing the audible voice, but they are certainly seeing the presence of God. The shaking here. All right. All right. Verse twenty says, "Then God spoke all these words." Now He's speaking these words in the presence of all the people. And this is what, as I said, this is the Ten Commandments. This becomes the essence of um, the law, the, the, the essence of the law. I want to come back out of this, you know, kind of elaborate on this a little bit more. This becomes the essence of the law. And the reason why I want to say this, all of the law, there are some 600 and I think 13 commandments of the law. But they are all um, summed up in these Ten Commandments. They are all summed up in these Ten Commandments. So that um, the civil laws, moral laws, um, um, the um, Levitical laws, all of these laws are summed up uh, in these commandments in one way or the other. So when you have the law for the priests, you know, then you you, uh, you have the moral law. All, all, all of them are summed up in these Ten Commandments. Now, the Ten Commandments law are summed up in two laws. Two commandments. Love God and then love your neighbor as God loves us. Now, it's going to come out to say love your neighbor as yourself, but it is love your neighbor as God loves us. Those two principles will be carried over into the New Testament. When he says to love God, okay, um, when Jesus says, I give you these two commandments, you know, love me and then love God and love you, love one another as I have loved you. 
So all of these commandments, the Ten Commandments, the law then is based upon loving your neighbor. That that's what the Ten Commandments is about. If you and as we go through, you see it all has to do with how you treat, how you first love God, and then how then you love your neighbor. You cannot love your neighbor without first understanding and recognizing the love you should have towards God, your relationship towards God. Okay, so then that will say, why don't I steal from my neighbor? Right? Why don't I kill my neighbor? Why don't I covet my neighbor's thing too well? Because um, God loved. And by the way, the Ten Commandments are based upon how God values us. The Ten Commandments is valued. It's based upon the value that God has upon us. Then this is the value we have one to another. Okay. So, um, now, because of the sinful nature, man cannot achieve this. Okay. That's why it will be um, fully realized in the New Testament. All right. Verse 1 says, then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the place of slavery. Do not have other gods besides me. So right here, the first commandment, right here, do not have any, no adultery, not, don't have any other gods. Now keep this in mind. This was the norm in all, in every nation. <laughs> Verse 4, do not make an idol for yourself, whether in the shape of anything in the heavens above, or on the earth below, or in the waters underneath. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the father's sin to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Now. Let me stop because this is a couple of things to unpack here. One, he says, do not make any molten image. Now, the, the idea here is for uh, pagan worship. So keep that in mind, pagan worship. So don't make an image to bow down. So he's not necessarily saying that you shouldn't paint. Now, we see painting today. I, I don't show any images of uh, God, artists, renderings. Most of them are racist, in my in my opinion. When you see the right Jesus and things like that, I don't show them. I just don't. So any, you know, they, they, but 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 that in itself is not violating this commandment. Some people say you should not make any kind of painting. That's not what he said. The idea was not to make an, an any kind of image to bow down to them. Okay. And then um, notice he says that if you bow down to worship them, he, judged, he, he said, I will punish the father's sins, the children for the father's sins to the third generation. Now, we're going to see later where there is a command that says, do not uh, punish the fathers, I mean, the children for the father's sin. So right here, is this a um, contradiction? Absolutely not. What, what he is talking about here is the father's sins, really, that the children commit. That's the issue there. Notice the last statement of those who hate me. The idea is that then if I commit a sin, and we're going to see this clearly in the law, my children cannot be punished for that. Just in that. In other words, you can't say, well, your father was a murderer. We're going to kill you. No. But if my children become murderers like their fathers or like me, then that's what he is referring to. Now, verse 6 says, But showing faithful love to, to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. So that's the difference. Uh, those who love him, he says he would show mercy. And by the way, this showing the mercy, uh, notice the fourth generation of those who hate me, but thousands of generations of those that love me. He would show mercy, okay? Never, under, never underestimate the mercy of God. I mean, what we're going to see in the Old Testament 
is God's mercy is shown more than his judgment, right? People think the God of the Old Testament was, you know, smite thee with fire and all that kind of stuff. No, he, 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 you're going to see he is more merciful. The mercy of God is shown throughout the Old Testament more than anything. Verse 7, do not misuse the name of the Lord your God, because the Lord will not leave anyone unpunished who misuses his name. Now, that is very, how do I use God's name? And that this would be what? The name of Yahweh? Not just God himself. The term God is not the name of God. If you want to say what the name would be, Yahweh. If you wanted to even go down and say Jehovah, Okay, at, at this juncture, we wouldn't necessarily have to argue over the issue of that. But the point is, don't just haphazardly use the name. So then he says, so, um, and certainly don't blaspheme it. We'll get to that in a moment. So these are all perspectives. Again, how do we treat the creator of the universe? Right? In other words, always treat the creator of the universe with respect and the holiness he demands. That That is the whole point here. Verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You are to labor six days and to do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath or rest to, your, to the Lord your God. You must not do any work. Your son, now, now I want you to pay attention to this here. You, your sons, or your daughters, your male or female slaves, your livestock, or the foreigner who is within your gate. Now, I want you to keep something in mind. Notice he says here that uh, not even the slave will do work. I'm, I'm just a sidebar here. You know, how when people want to justify slavery, the, it, but they never look at the brutality behind slave masters and how they dealt with their slaves. But I do digress. Uh, verse 11, he says, For the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything in them in six days. Then he rested on the Sabbath day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and declared it holy. So he kind of goes back to Genesis chapters 1 and 2. Genesis account. In other words, this Sabbath day rest. The word rest, too, by the way, doesn't mean to recoup your energy. We do that because we're flawed human beings. The idea of rest, even though recouping, ceasing from labors is involved, is there's also a sense of en kind of enjoying it. It would be like if I fix up a room. I labor hard to fix up a room. So I paint the walls, put up shelves, put in furniture, carpet, right? Put in furniture, hook up a TV, sound surround. This is labor that I'm doing. Then the rest would be, okay, I'm done. The room is complete. Let me sit down on the couch, turn on the TV, enjoy the surround sound. That, that's the idea of rest too. The idea of it is enjoying the creation that God had created. All right, verse 12 says, Honor your father and your mother so that you may have a long life in the land and that your and the Lord your God is giving you, that the Lord your God is giving you. Now, what is interesting about this, uh, Paul would say that this is the first command with the promise. That this is the first command with a promise. Let me go back here. Um, the first command with a promise. The promise is uh, long life. In other words, by honoring your father and mother. In other words, there's there's always to be a respect between parents. He says, and this is this is the first promise. That you may have a long life uh, in the land that the Lord your God has given you. Now, verse. 13. Do not murder. Now, if you're reading the old King James, it says do not kill. So there's always this discussion about uh, how we should do this. Do should we, it, it's killing or murder. Murder is the 
intentionally taking of a life. Now, by the way, we're going to get more into that as he breaks down the law as we move through Exodus and um, uh, all right sorry about that quite all right my phone went off all right okay so um verse the, the idea of verse thing do not murder um, so there is a difference between killing and murder and, and, and the law is going to break it down. For example, there is the unintentional, um, what we call manslaughter. Now, again, I, I, I'll say that because he really is going to break that down as we move through it, it, not only Exodus, but Leviticus. He's really going to break down the difference in the two. So that there is the difference when a, for example, police officer or in the army that they kill in the commission of their service. There's a difference in that. There's even a, a, a difference in killing as a defense. So we'll get more into that. Murder, it's a proper word here because it is the, un, it is the um, killing, okay? Um, brutal killing, malicious killing of a person. And that's what this command is. Verse 14, do not commit adultery. Now again, we're we're kind of we're going to break this down more because there is kind of interesting here in the <laughs> it's a man's world. That's all I can say. But <laughs> the adultery here does mean between when you violate your marital law, thou shalt not commit adultery. And then he's going to break this down later. Verse two: Thou do not steal. And he said, do not give false testimony against your neighbor. Now, this is important here. Notice he says, do not give false testimony against your neighbor. Do not lie that will bring conviction. Do not give false testimony against your neighbor. And then verse 17, do not covet your neighbor's house. Do not covet your neighbor's wife, his male female slave, his ox, donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor okay don't don't come in now I'm not again the first five books of Moses is going to break all of this down but this is the Ten Commandments right in other words you can almost say cliff notes as well cheat sheet right but we're going to break this down in terms of defining what these things mean here all right, verse 18 says, And all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning. Now, remember, God speaking this, and I get that. I don't know if they heard this, but what they, what he's going to report is what they actually witnessed and saw. And I want you to notice their reaction. All the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountains surrounded by smoke. And the people, excuse me, when the people saw it, they trembled and stood at a distance. You speak to us. And we will listen, they said to Moses. But don't let God speak to us, or we will die. Um, verse 20, Moses responded to the people, Don't be afraid, for God has come to test you, so that you will, you will fear him and will not sin. And the people remained standing at the distance as Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. So, Notice their response was, oh my God, this, this is terrible. Remember, the mountains are shaking. There's just thick, thick clouds and lightning and stuff. And so, the, 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 and of course, you have a couple of things in terms of when God, if God was to show up, there is the external, this, this terror, right, that seizes people. And then there's the internal, that you become exceedingly aware of your sinfulness okay all right um verse 22 then the lord told moses now remember he goes he moses says don't don't you know the people remain standing verse 21 again and the people remain standing at a distance as moses approached the thick darkness where god was verse 22 then the lord told moses this is what you are to say to the Israelites. You have seen that I've spoken to you from heaven. You must not make gods of silver uh, to rival me. 
you must not make gods for yourself um, you must you must you must make an earthen altar for me and sacrifice on it uh, your your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings your sheep your goat as well as your cattle I will come to you and bless you in in every place where I call my name to be remembered if you make a stone altar for me you must not build it out of cut stones if you use the chisel on it you will defile it you must not go up to my altar on steps so that your nakedness is not exposed on it now again we're, we're getting to more defining of these commandments later um, what is interesting about these commands and we're going to get into again Exodus and especially Exodus and Leviticus will really break down all of these commandments in detail okay in detail but it is to note why God is so on a dietary because notice they will fall into a dietary now just 40 days from this experience right here you're gonna go up in the mountain 40 days they're gonna build the golden calf okay all right guys um chapter 20 in the um, chapter 21 in the next study and we're gonna talk about slavery all right, see you in the next study.